Hi guys, welcome to this video on how you can prepare a pure dry salt from an insoluble reactant. So in an exam, you might be given two reactants, one of which is soluble, one which is insoluble, and asked how you can prepare a salt from it. So for example, magnesium oxide, which is an insoluble solid, and hydrochloric acid, which is an aqueous solution. How can you prepare a salt of magnesium chloride? The video that I'm linking to here shows you exactly how to carry out this practical. So before you move on to the next part of the video, which is all the intricacies, please watch this first. Now you know how to do the actual practical, what you need to know is why the insoluble solid should be in excess. So for the reaction between magnesium oxide and hydrochloric acid, the first thing you want is your magnesium oxide, which is your insoluble solid. As you can see, I've put this into a beaker here, and then I've got my hydrochloric acid which is my aqueous solution. So I'm going to add the two of them together. Now what you must do is add the insoluble solid in excess. So magnesium oxide, you need to add more and more of it until no more dissolves. When that happens, you'll no longer have hydrochloric acid in the solution. You'll be left with your salt, which is magnesium chloride, and your water H2O. You'll also have your leftover magnesium oxide, which is your impurity, which you now need to get rid of. And you do that by filtration. So you need to take your solution, which has got your magnesium chloride, your water, and your leftover insoluble magnesium oxide, which will no longer react because your acid's all gone, and you need to filter it through. This will leave you with your magnesium chloride and water with no impurities in there. Then your final step is your evaporation and crystallization. So you need to take your solution, you need to put it into an evaporating basin, and then you need to heat it. You want to do this until you've got about half to a third of your water left in the solution. Then put it on one side, let the remainder of the water evaporate off. This will leave you with your magnesium chloride crystals, which is nice and pure. Right, let's have a look at an exam question and see how much of that you've picked up. So this is a six marker and it says explain how to produce a pure salt of magnesium chloride from insoluble magnesium oxide and hydrochloric acid. It also says in your answer you should explain why excess of magnesium oxide is used and the excise reactant is filtered. Think back to what we've talked about in this video and also go to the other video which was linked earlier on explaining how to produce that salt. Both of those will help you answer this question. Pause the video, have a go now. Okay, let's see how you've done. So this is a six market, there's loads of different things you can put in there. The key things I'm looking for though is the answer to why you need excess and why you should filter. So we'll start from the beginning, we'll go through the steps one at a time. So the first thing you need to do is you need to measure out your liquid. So in this case, hydrochloric acid. Choose a volume, it doesn't matter. I've gone with 50 centimeters cubed, it could be 100, could be 25, that doesn't matter as long as you've said measure out a certain amount. Your second step is to add some magnesium oxide to the acid and stir until it's dissolved. So there's two marking points there. You need to keep adding that until no more magnesium oxide dissolves, no more disappears, no more reacts. Once that's happened, you know you've reacted all of the hydrochloric acid. You add excess to make sure the solution is completely neutral, so you will end up there with your magnesium chloride, your water, and your leftover magnesium oxide. Filter the solution. By doing that, it removes your impurities, your unreacted magnesium oxide. That leaves you with just the magnesium and chloride and water. And then you need to evaporate about two-thirds of the water, two-thirds half the water. Leave the rest of the water to evaporate, and that will leave you with your pure crystals. That's pretty much it from this video. There is one final thing, which is the review question, which is exactly the same question, but this time applying it to a different salt. So explain how to produce a pure dry salt of copper sulfate from insoluble copper oxide and sulfuric acid. And then again, explain why you need to use excess copper oxide and why you filter it. That ends this video. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click on subscribe down below. And you can also find out more information on my website, mrbarnstc.com, and Facebook and Twitter.